This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. everyone, welcome to Catitude. I'm your show host, Michelle Ferg, and today we're going to be talking about what probably most of you are experiencing, at least in the U.S. and Canada and most of Europe, the heat and your cat. We'll be right back. Listen up, cat lovers. If you're planning a vacation, you need to hear about trusted house sitters. They connect pet parents with verified and background checked sitters so you can travel worry free knowing your fur baby has all the care and company they could need. I love this. I can't stand the thought of my pets being lonely or being in a kennel, so I can't wait to sign up. Catitude listeners, you get 20% off today with code CATITUDE20. That's CATITUDE20. Go to trustedhousesitters.com and use the code CATITUDE20 for 20% off. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. Wow, I don't think it's just me. I mean, we're recording in end of June 2022. It is hot. It is hot everywhere. I mean, I live in a place that's generally warm all year round. South Florida, and it's been so hot to me and humid, Ugh. but it's pretty warm everywhere. I mean, crazy temperatures, you know, climate change, who knows what. But today, we're not talking about climate change, obviously. This is catitude. We're going to talk about what happens to your cats in the heat. Because, you know, I think cats kind of get, I think, pushed aside, you know, we think about dogs in the heat because usually people are transporting their dogs or they're playing outside with their dogs. So you hear about dogs being, you know, left in cars for five minutes with, without the windows rolled down, even with the windows rolled down, that's no good. And you just hear about this all the time, but you don't hear a lot about what you should do with your kitties when it's, you know, so hot out. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So hopefully it'll give you some uh, great tips just in case you happen to be transporting your kitties or your kitty happens to get overheated or whatnot maybe take off that whatnot, or in case your cat happens to be a little warmer than he or she should be. So most of us, when we think about cats and we think about warmth, we just think the two go together, right? Cats are always seeking out the place in your house that's next to the window, right where the sun shines in. They do like to be warm. Um, You know, they'll jump in your basket of laundry when it's right from the dryer because it's nice and warm not good for the clothing because now it's not nice and clean, but they love the nice, warm, you know, toasty blanket, even when it's kind of warm out. So it makes you wonder, do cats get bothered by the heat? Yes. Yes, they do. Yes. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm going to just go over a couple of questions that I've gotten repeatedly over the years. I've been asked this question a lot, if cats can tolerate the heat better than dogs. And I think a lot of us have a mindset that cats can tolerate heat better than dogs just because of how cats are pictured out there in the world. They're, you know, always shown curled up with sunshine in, you know, a warm area all the time. And you see you know, pictures of dogs and snow and on boats and all this stuff. You don't see as much with cats, but cats can only tolerate the heat a little better than dogs. And you really still have to be aware of what hot weather can do to your cat. You have to be open to looking at all of the signs. And of course, even though cats can tolerate up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, of course, never, 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 ever, ever leave your cat in a warm or hot car, ever. And, you know, most of the time you find out, you hear more information on the news or these horrible stories. A dog left in a car will start to deteriorate after only 
five minutes. So don't do it. It's weird that you hear about cats left in the car because we really don't transport cats as much. They're either in our homes all the time or they're indoor, outdoor, and then they're on their own prowling around. They're just much more independent. But a lot of people do transport kitties to different places. Don't leave your cat in the car. So let's talk about why cats can tolerate heat a little better than dogs. They have a high body temperature, so they can handle temperatures as high as 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But that temperature depends on a lot of different factors. The humidity level, the cat's age, the cat's health, the type of cat, and even the cat's fur. And you always want to be cautious because cats can overheat easily. This is especially true for certain breeds that are flat-nosed, such as Persian and Himalayan cats, overweight cats, very young cats, very old cats, long-haired breeds like Maine Coons, and cats with heart problems. Cats with any of these issues are much more likely to overheat than, you know, just your standard short hair tabby. But you still have to be aware of the climate, of the weather, of where your cat's going to be and what the temperature is going to be, what your cat will have around him or her to alleviate the heat. And, you know, going back to what I was mentioning before, you know, we all think cats love warmth and hot weather. Yeah. But my cats, I mean, I have a catio and once it gets to like, I don't know, 90 degrees, and this is a covered catio, that's a patio for cats. So I think most of you guys know that. But my catio is covered. But still, once it gets to a certain temp outside, maybe 90 degrees, and there's a fan there, there's water. I actually have a cat door so the cats can go in and out as they please. So they have a choice. But, you know, again, once it hits 90 degrees, they don't want to go outside. It is just too hot and it's too humid for them. Forget it. So this brings us to the question. What do you do if you have feral cats? And I have two. And they can't come inside. Well, the male could. Jethro could come inside. Sammy is not having any of that. I mean, come on, Sammy. It's been six years. I've been feeding you for six years and watering and taking care of you. Six years. She still wants nothing of it. Just outside. So I make sure for my feral outdoor cats, community cats, whatever you want to call them, that they have water. And they actually have a water fountain that filters through clean water and cool water. I'm telling you, these cats kind of have it made. They have an area with a lot of bushes, so there's a lot of shade for them. They generally hide under a car. You know, the car has been sitting there for a while, so the concrete ground is not hot. And I generally find them there or lying underneath the shade of, you know, bushes or trees. So as long as there's a place for your feral cats, aka community cats, to feel comfortable, they'll be okay. I don't know what in the world you would do if you lived in a place like the desert where it gets to 120, but I would say maybe have a place where your cats can go indoors if, you know, you have community cats and in such a climate that is so, so hot. But then again, it's also a drier heat in the desert, so it might be okay, but again, you want to make sure there's cool water and you want to make sure there's shade for your cats. Let's talk about indoors. The best temperature for cats inside is about 78 to 80 degrees. That's a little warmer than most of us two-leggers, aka humans, like it. You know, we generally prefer, I think, about 75. And we also, you know, especially those of us in these warm climates have a lot of fans. And you might think, well, I can keep the house maybe at 82 or so, cut back on my, you know, electric bill and have the fans going. No, that's not going to make a difference for your cats. And here's why. Fans help when, you know, us humans, because we perspire. So as we perspire, the fans work to cool us off. Cats don't perspire. So the fans are not going to do much at all. You have to remember that cats have very few sweat glands. So having a fan, you know, on your cat, while they might like the breeze, it's not going to do much to change their body temperature. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back. And I'm going to tell you some things you should do if your cat is overheating. We'll be right back. 
a pet parent to a dog and a cat, you're going to run into some catastrophes. Your dog eating up the cat's food, or scavenging in the litter box is one of them. With Door Buddy, you don't have to worry about cutting a hole in your door or struggling with a pet gate. Door Buddy's adjustable door strap installs in seconds and without any tools. Finally, an easier way to let cats into rooms and keep dogs out of trouble. For 20% off Door Buddy, use code CATITUDE20. That's CATITUDE20 at thedoorbuddy.com. That's thedoorbuddy.com. Give your cat back its space today. Hey everyone, Michelle Fern here. You know, I love using dog crates for my kitties, especially when I'm introducing them to the rest of the members of the household. And I really love Diggs, that's Diggs with two G's, Revel collapsible dog crate. You know, they don't make cat collapsible crates that are big enough for several cats. So Diggs crate is what I need. It's fabulous. It's safe. It's convenient. You could set it up in less than a minute. You can literally raise it and collapse it with one hand. Super easy to transport and very easy to clean. And you know, while the kitties are hanging in the crate, they look good in my living room. The Rebel crate looks like furniture. And if you're traveling this summer, make sure you check out Diggs' five-star crash test rated passenger travel carrier. It's small enough to fit right under your airline seat, but with plenty of space for your fur babe. Make your pets more comfortable with Diggs' wonderful products. And for a limited time, I'd like to offer you 15% off your entire Diggs order. To get this offer, you have to go to my special URL, digs.pet slash petlife. That's D-I-G-G-S dot pet slash petlife to get 15% off. Order today. Go to digs.pet slash petlife. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. In the second half of the show, I want to talk about what to do when your cat gets overheated. Now, luckily, it's kind of rare that most cats get overheated because they're not like dogs. They conserve their energy. They avoid exerting themselves. They're not going to run after the ball and play fetch with you back and forth, you know, at least not as much as your dog will. You know, they kind of chill. So they don't really become overheated too easily. I'm thinking of all my five cats, and let's see, I've had cats the last 15 years. I have seen one of the cats pant once. And that was Dennis. And he was young and he was a younger Dennis, very young. I think he was about a year and a half then. And he was playing with one of those um, fishing rod cat toys. And he was just so into jumping and getting it. Now, no, he saves his energy. He saves his energy for eating and for, you know, cuddles. That's about what he does. So generally your cat's not going to overheat by exerting themselves, but They might overheat sometimes. So here's some signs that you should look for. Is your cat breathing rapidly? Red tongue and mouth? Is your cat vomiting? Is your cat lethargic? Is your cat stumbling and staggering, kind of like it's drunk or something? That's not a good sign. And if their rectal temperature is over 105, generally, unless you're brave, you won't be taking their rectal temperature. So you'd probably have your cat at the vet. Um, by the time you know that. But these other symptoms can definitely be seen by any pet parent. Remember, breathing rapidly, red tongue and mouth, vomiting, lethargic, kind of stumbling or staggering around like a little drunk sailor. Sorry, sailors. You know, like, you know what I mean? Those are signs your cat may be having heat stroke. What do you do if you see these signs? Well, you want to get to the vet as soon as possible. But here are some things you can do to cool your cat down right before you head to the vet. Move your cat to a cool location. If your cat's outdoors for some reason, maybe got locked out or who knows what, bring your cat indoors. Offer your cat water to drink, not very, very cold water, cool water. Very cold water can shock their system. Don't do that. Spray some water on your cat's fur, fan, or have your cat near a breezy area, maybe an open window, and keep continuing to do 
all of these things on your way to the vet. You always want to get to the vet. You don't know for sure how long your cat was in the heat. Your cat may need fluids. That's something very common that they'll do at the vet's office is give your cat an IV of fluid because not good when a cat or dog or any animal gets dehydrated. So very important. If your cat experiences any of those symptoms, get them to the vet. And then I talked about this a little bit, but keep in mind that your cat can't cool him or herself. They don't have sweat glands like we do. They have very few. Their sweat glands are a few in their feet and they have some in their nose. That's it. And the longer haired cats have it even worse because more hair means more heat on the cat. So remember to keep your cat in a well-ventilated area. Avoid taking your cat on unnecessary car trips to the vet. If you have to transport your cat because you're moving to another location, if you need to transport, you know, TNR cats. But other than that, don't drive with your cat, not in the summer. It's way too hot. So anyway, keep in mind that the signs of heat stroke and keep in mind that you want to be sure to keep your cats in a cool area, make sure they have the water that they need, make sure that your indoor temperature is not too warm, and this will keep your cat healthy and safe. And most important, I know I've said it way too many times, but people do this. Keep your cat. And if you have a dog, keep your dog out of the car during the summer unless it's necessary. It's too darn hot. So keep your fur babes home unless you're going to the vet or there's some other reason that they must be on a car trip. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this show. I think, you know, kind of brief show, but very informative because we don't really talk about cats and overheating. I'd like to thank my cat crew, Jethro, Molly, Charlotte, Sammy, and Dennis for teaching me how to take care of cats, whether they're hot or not. Thanks to Nikki the dog, who knows how to stay cool. Thanks to everyone listening to Catitude. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. And of course, a huge thank you to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me sound amazing. So remember, lose the attitude. Have Catitude. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.